Prem Manande Hari Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jai Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jai Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda The speaker for today's Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita class was initiated by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, in 1971. He has been a teacher at the Mayapur Institute since its inception. He does his preaching all around Asia and India, the Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia, and China. His Holiness, Bhakti Vigna Vinasa Narasrima Swami. No, no Swami. <laughs> Swami comes first. It's wrong. Okay, we're reading from Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila, Chapter 1, The Spiritual Masters, verse number 3. Verses on the board. Yadadvaitam Brahmo Panishadi Tadap Yashyatanubha. Yo yat, yo atmater, yo atmater yam mi purusha iti so sham suave bhava. Sadaishwar ye purno yai ha bhagavan sa shwayamayam. Na Chaitanya Krishna Jagati Paratarvam Paramiha Yadadvaitam Brahmo Panishadi Tadap Yashyatanubha Yatmantarami Parame Itosa Swabhava Sadaishwar ye purno ya iha bhagavan sa shvayamayam. Na chetanyat krishnas jagati paratatvam paramiha. Yad advaitam brahmo panishadap yashyatanubha. Ya Atman Taryami Purusha Itisro Sramsha Vibhava Sadaishwar Ye Purno Ya Iha Bhagavan Sashwayamayam Na Chaitanyat Krishna Jagati Paratarvam Paramiha
Vaishnavis. Yet, that which, Advaitam, without a second, Brahma, the impersonal Brahman, Upanishad, in the Upanishads, Tat, that, Api, certainly, Ashya, He, Tanuba, the effulgence of his transcendental body. Ya, who, Atma, the super soul, Antayoni, indwelling Lord, Purusha, the supreme enjoyer, Iti, thus, Sa, he, Ashya, his, Amshavibhava, expansion of a plenary portion. Sadaishwarya, with the six opulences. Purusha, Fu, Ya, Hu, Isha, Isha. Iha, Iha. Here. here, Bhagavan, Bhagavan. The, supreme the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sa, Sa. He. he, Swayam, Swayam. Himself, himself. Ayam. Ayam, This One, this one. Na. Na. Na, Not, Not. Chaitanyat, Then Lord Chaitanya. Krishna, 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 then Lord Krishna, Janati, in the world, Paro, higher, Tadvam, truth, Puram, another, Iha, here, translation. What the Upanishads describe as the impersonal Brahman is but the effulgence of his body. And the Lord, known as the Super Soul, is but his localized plenary portion. Lord Chaitanya is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna himself, full with six opulences. He he is the absolute truth, and no other truth is greater than or equal to him. Oma jnana timarandasya jnananjana shalakaya chaksurun militanyena tasmai shri gurave nama Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam 
Bande ham Shri Guru Shri Yadapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu Dhinna Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Korange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadhe Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this is one of the introductory verses describing Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the very first verse, Krishna Das Kaviraj had given benediction. And then the second verse, he described the form of the Lord. Now he's going on to establish the position of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that the other features of the Absolute Truth are also his uh, portions of his potencies. The Brahman, the impersonal Brahman, which is glorified in the Upanishads, is the goal of the, the Jnanis. Their goal is to merge into the oneness, to enter into that effulgence, that all-pervading light, which is the Brahman. Of course, that Brahman, that is also Krishna. That is not different from Krishna as the sunlight is not different from the sun. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the position of the Brahman. He said, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Naso Chakti uh, No, he says, in, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the Brahman. He says, I am the basis of that Brahman. Brahmanohi pratishtaham amrita shyavayashyacha shasvatasya to dharma sukhasyai kantitasya. Krishna says, I am the basis of that impersonal Brahman. He doesn't say that the Brahman is the basis of him. Some people worship the Brahman as the supreme. But that Brahman, that is also Krishna, Krishna's potency, Krishna's energy, the impersonal Brahman. So the Upanishads, they glorify the Brahman. Prabhupada describes the Upanishads as the first step in self-realization. Coming to know the Brahman, we can realize something of the sat potency, the eternal nature of the living entity, the nature of the soul, sat, eternal. It is only some partial realization of the absolute truth. Then, so the impersonalists say, no, the Lord is a Brahman. That Brahman, that effulgence, of course, it comes from the body of the Supreme Lord. Lord Brahma also describes the position of the Brahman. Yeah, uh, 
Yashya Prabha Prabhavato Jagadanda Kotim Kotish Vashesha Vasudati Vibhuti Binam Tad Brahma Nishkalam Ananta Mashesha Bhutam Govindam Adipursam Tamaham Bajamin Lord Brahma is describe, describing how the Brahman is coming from the body of Lord Krishna. It is the effulgence emanating from the body of the Lord. And that Brahman is per pervading everywhere, both in the material and the spiritual worlds. This whole cosmic manifestation is coming from the Brahman. But that Brahman itself comes from the body of the Supreme Lord. It's the effulgence coming from his body. Then, Paramatma, another feature of the Lord. That uh, the Paramatma is situated within the hearts of all living entities as a super soul. As a super soul in the heart of all living entities, he provides knowledge, remembrance, forgetfulness. He's the overseer and the permitter of activities. The super soul is described in Bhagavad Gita in the chapter 10, Vibhuti Yoga. Lord Krishna had enumerated countless vibhutis, how he is of flowing rivers, he is the Ganga, of beasts he is the lion, he is the syllable Om and the Vedic mantras, he is the taste in water, all of these things. This is Krishna's vibhutis. But then at the end of the chapter, Lord Krishna says, Ekam Shena Stitopavad. He said, what need is there, o Arjuna, for all of this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support this entire universe. So that single fragment of the Lord, which is pervading and supporting the entire universe, is Shirodakashai Vishnu, the Super Soul, in the form of the Super Soul. So this is one aspect of the Lord as Paramatma. The Purusha avatars are also like the super soul, just as Mahavishnu is the soul of all the universes of the material creation. Garbhodakashai Vishnu is the super soul of the aggregate of all living entities. And Shirodakashai Vishnu is the super soul in the hearts of the living entities. So these Purusha avatars, they are simply expansions coming from Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna exists in his feature as Bhagavan. The yogis, they meditate on the super soul. We said the jnanis, their goal was the Brahman, and the yogis identify with the super soul. The jnanis realize the eternal potency of the Lord as Sat. The yogis realize Chit potency, Sat and Chit, that Chit potency, that all-pervading nature of the Lord. How the Lord is situated everywhere, in everything, even within every atom as a super soul. So this is Sat and Chit. But they have no realization of the bliss, the ananda potency. That can only be understood by those who have devotion for the Lord. So those who cultivate the path of bhakti, they can go on to realize the Lord in full. There are three features of the absolute truth as described in Srimad Bhagavatam. Vedanti tat tat vam vidam tat vam yad jnanam advayam brahmati paramatmati bhagavan iti shabhyate. Sutta Goswami describes 
learned transcendentalists who know the absolute truth call this non-dual substance as Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. A non-dual substance. It's non-dual. That Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. They're all the supreme absolute truth. But they're different realizations of the absolute truth. One who knows Brahman and he does not yet have the full realization. And similarly, those who simply know the Lord as Paramatma, they also do not have full realization of the Absolute Truth. One has to know the Lord as Bhagavan. Then he can actually understand the full features of the Absolute Truth. It is said, just like demigods are able to see the sun god in the same way those who are devotees of the supreme lord they can perceive the supreme absolute truth as the personality of godhead bhagavan the residents of the higher planets the demigods they are not like us they have special bodies different from our form from our bodies and with their bodies they can actually see the Sun God in the Sun planet we can hardly look at the Sun but the demigods can actually see the Sun God within the Sun planet because they're qualified to see in the same way the devotees can actually see the Lord. They can actually be qualified to see Him when they cultivate the path of pure devotion. Just like Lord Brahma also mentions about this, that Primanjana Charita Bhakti Velo Chanaina Santa Sadaiva Ridayeshu Velo Kayanti Yam Shamma Sundaram Machinchagunam Swarupam Govindam Adipursham Tamaham Bajami. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is Krishna, Shamsundar himself, with inconceivable, innumerable attributes, whom the pure devotee sees within the heart of hearts, with the eye of devotion tinged with the salve of love. So, the salve of love, the eyes have to have that ointment of the salve of love. Then we can actually see the Lord as Bhagavan. The Lord is known as Bhagavan. Jiva Goswami analyzes this word Bhagavan to explain how the three syllables have meanings Im uh, helping us to understand the nature of the Supreme Lord. Ba-ga-va. Ba meaning Jai Shri Shri Radha Madhava Asta Sakiki. The syllable Ba indicates one who is the, uh, the, the maintainer, the sustainer, protector of the universe and the syllable ga indicates one who is the creator and va means that which is dwelling in everything so from these definitions of these three syllables we can understand how the Lord is known by his six opulences. Just as Srila Vyasadeva's father Parasharamuni describes Bhagavan, that Bhagavan means one who possesses the six opulences. Wealth, beauty, fame, knowledge, strength and renunciation. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is none different from Lord Krishna. This is established on the basis of revealed scriptures as well as by the 
the, the, the actual presentation of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, that when he was manifest on this planet, he exhibited himself. He, 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 he displayed these different potencies. He displayed the, all the opulences of the Supreme Lord. We may say, oh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, wasn't he just a poor Brahman? Actually, there was never any scarcity in the home of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because he is the Supreme Lord. So naturally, the Goddess of Fortune bestows all of her benedictions on him. But at the same time, he wants to maintain the position of the Brahman, at least in the early part of his life. And then in the later part of his life, he renounced the world. This is described also from a verse in the Vishnu Sahasranam, which is attributed to describe the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that how in his early life he will perform householder life and he will have a beautiful bodily form and he will be covered in chanda and he will be the, co the color of molten gold. So varna varna himango, like this. Vishnu Sahasranam described Lord the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and how later in his life he will renounce the householder ashram and at the same time he will remain equipoised and peaceful in mind and he will defeat all the impersonalists and mayavadis. He will establish the real conclusion of the scriptures. So this verse from Vishnu Sahasranam which comes from Mahabharat. This is accepted as one of the verses identifying the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the Supreme Lord. Another verse comes in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam given by uh, Karabhajana Muni, one of the nine Yogendras. The nine Yogendras came to preach to Maharaj Nimi, the king of Videha, and Karabhajana Muni was asked to describe the Lord's incarnations in different yugas. And he described how in the Kali Yuga the Lord will come in the, the, a form which is not black, right? We all know this very Krishna Varnam Tivish Akrishnam. Sango Pangastra Parshadam Yagnae Sankirtan Prae Yajantihi Sumedasaha. Very important verse to establish the position of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the avatar as the avatar for the Kali Yuga. That he has come to establish the Yuga Dharma. Kali Yuga Dharma Harinam Sankirtan. Krishna Shakti Vini Nahi Tara Pravartan. That one has to have Krishna Shakti to establish the chanting of the holy name. What better person to establish the Yuga Dharma than Lord Krishna himself? Therefore, Lord Krishna came in the Kali Yuga, but he came in a color which was not Krishna. Krishna means blackish, but the verse in Srimad Bhagavatam describes a Krishna. Hmm? That he is not blackish, he is golden color. In every yuga, the Lord comes in different colors. In the Satya Yuga, white color. Dwap uh, Treta Yuga, red color. Dwapara Yuga, blackish color. And now in the Kali Yuga, he has come in this golden color. Mm. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, uh, not alone. The, one of the qualities of the Supreme Lord Krishna 
which distinguish him from Lord Vishnu is that he is never alone, but he comes with his devotees. And similarly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also appeared along with his associates. Nityananda came, Advaita Acharya came, Jagannath Mishra and Mother Sachi also came. So many of the Lord's devotees, they also came to take part in his pastimes. Because the Lord does not like to come on his own. He comes with his devotees. He's always in the association of his devotees. And people who take part in the Sankirtan movement, then they are described, that they're sumidasaha, right? They have broad intelligence, good intelligence, purified intelligence. Sometimes people think the Sankirtan is just for sentimentalists. They think, oh, it's just singing and dancing. But the devotees of Lord Chaitanya are not sentimentalists, but they are broad-minded, they have purified intelligence, and they understand the full glories of the Lord. It's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, in contrast to those who are sumedasaha, they're antavattupalamte cham tadbhavati aupamedasaha. Aupamedasaha. Prabhupada said, brain is like stool, small brain. They worship other gods without knowing the position, the supreme position of the Lord. Shri Krishna. So Shri Krishna comes in the Kali Yuga in the form as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Gopinath Acharya was discussing with Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was doubting that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could actually be the incarnation of the Lord. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya quoted from, he, he quoted, he said, Shastra say the Lord is known as three yuga. He only comes in three yugas. So he doesn't come in Kali Yuga. But Gopinath Acharya corrected him and pointed out that your, your conclusion is against the conclusion of scriptures like Mahabharata and Srimad Bhagavatam. And Gopinath Acharya quoted the verse which I just mentioned, Suvarna Varna Himango, describing the pastime of the Lord from Vishnu Sahasranam, which is from Mahabharata. And then Gopinath Acharya also quoted this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam from 7th Canto. Prahlad Maharaj is offering prayers to Lord Nishringadev to pacify Lord Nishringadev. And at that time Prahlad Maharaj was describing the Lord, how he incarnates in different forms and how he is also known as Triyuga. But he also comes in the Kali Yuga in a concealed form, Chana Avatar. So this is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. This is evidence from Mahabharata and from Srimad Bhagavatam that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is actually directly the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now some people argue, no, no, you've got it wrong. Actually, it's Krishna who's, it's Krishna who's the avatar. Vishnu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So this is defeated by Krishna Das Kaviraj. He goes on to discuss the verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, which describes, Ete chamsa kalapumsa Krishnas tu Bhagavan Swayam. Ete chamsa kalapumsa, right? That all of these uh, incarnations of the Lord are 
portions and plenary parts of their plenary portions or parts of the plenary portion of Vishnu avatars, of the Purusha avatars. Generally, the incarnations come from the Purusha avatars, either from Garbhodakashai Vishnu usually, like this. So this is stated there in Srimad Bhagavatam. Ete chamsa kala pumsa. Pumsa, meaning Purusha avatars. And ete, these, because they were all the incarnations of the Lord had been described in the third chapter, first canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. Sutta Goswami had described so many different incarnations. Now he is describing Lord Krishna. So he says, these incarnations are all portions or parts of a plenary, parts of the portion of the plenary portion of the Purusha avatars, but Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam. Lord Krishna is the Bhagavan Swayam. He is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is not just some avatar of Vishnu, but he is the original Supreme Lord. And Lord Vishnu himself has his origin from Lord Krishna. The example was given in Brahma Samhita. Diparcharya vahida santaram abhupaitya dipayate vivrita hetu sam anadharma yastagrade vahicha vishnu chaya vibhati govindam madipursham tamaham bhajamin Just as the light of one candle can it exhibit itself in many other candles in the same way that one Supreme Lord can exhibit himself in so many other different forms. So the one original candle, it may be equal in heat and light to other candles, but still that one candle is the original. That original personality of Godhead is none other than Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna is not different from Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself comes as the Supreme Lord in the Kali Yuga to establish this Yuga Dharma. We want to understand fully the importance, the position, the actual position of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That he is not just simply a great soul. He is not just a portion of Mahavishnu, but he is the original Supreme Lord himself. People argue, no, no, this is just your sentiment. It's Vishnu who is the Supreme. But that is not what the Shastras say. They are taking a conclusion which is against the Shastra. The rule is that first you state the subject and the subject is followed by the predicate. Just like if we say, the vipra is a learned man. Right? So the vipra is the subject and the predicate is that he is a learned man. Now, if we say that from this verse in Srimad Bhagavatam that Vishnu is the supreme, that's not what Sutta Goswami said. Sutta Goswami didn't say. He, he said Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He said all of these incarnations are from, they're from the Purusha avatars. Ete chamsa kala pumsa. But Krishna stu Bhagavan Swayam. It is Krishna who is the original Supreme Swayam Bhagavan Personality of Godhead. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not different from Lord Krishna. The position of the Supreme Lord over the Purusha avatars is explained clearly how these Purusha avatars, they get their power from Krishna.
coming from Lord Krishna. Ultimately, everything comes from the Supreme Lord Krishna. Those who understand the scriptures, intelligent persons who understand the scriptures, they know actually the position of Lord Krishna as being distinct from all the other in other different demigods and Vishnu avatars and so on. And similarly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not different from Lord Krishna. And he has come to establish this Sankirtan movement. I read the third verse. In the second verse of this Chaitanya Charitamrita, it describes uh, how these two lords, Chaitanya and Nityananda are like the sun and the moon and they have appeared simultaneously on the horizon of Goda, Goda Desh, right? Goda Desh. This is Goda Desh named at the time of the Sain dynasty. This was called Goda Desh. So the capital of Goda Desh is here in Mayapur. So this is Gaudiya Vaishnava. So Chaitanya and Nityananda are like the sun and the moon and they have appeared together to bless everyone's heart and dissipate the darkness of ignorance. The darkness of ignorance in the Kali Yuga is due to the cheating propensity. And that cheating propensity is based on Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. That we are thinking that the goal of life are these four things. Practice some material religiosity to get economic development and that will give us sense gratification and will ultimately will lead to liberation. So this is the ignorance and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to remove that ignorance by the chanting of the holy name by establishing the Yuga Dharma. The cheating propensity is rejected in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. In the very beginning, Srila Vyasadeva has written, Dharma Projita Kaitavo Traparamo Narmatsara Namsatam. The Srimad Bhagavatam completely rejects all religion which are materially motivated. It's a cheating propensity, very strong Kali Yuga. We're looking to enjoy the ignorance of people. We want to remove that ignorance. And it's removed by the mercy of Bhagavan. Bhagavan, I said Ba, the syllable Ba means that sustainer, the maintainer. We are trying to maintain ourselves today by using scientific technology, by means of our mat limited material intelligence. We do not see the supreme intelligence behind this universe. How tiny brains are producing, you know, our tiny brains, we produce these horrible things called mobile phones and microchips, but the greater brain behind the universe is sustaining everything, holding everything in its place. We are struggling, trying to maintain things with our effort, but the Lord is holding everything simply by His transcendental power, the force of gravity, sustaining the planets in the universe. If we were, Prabhupada said, if we take a bunch of sand in our hand, it will simply fly in the, in the wind and goes to the ground. But the planets are all being maintained incredibly through the potency of the Supreme Lord. The limited brain of materialistic people cannot begin to conceive of the supreme intelligence behind this universe. 
the great the greatest intelligence we want to understand that personality who is behind this universe who's creating maintaining and also responsible for the annihilation of this place so that there is one supreme lord behind everything should be understood first of all then to understand the identity of that person we have books like Chaitanya Charitamrita describing to us the pastimes of that supreme intelligent being when he comes to this world. Just as some 500 years ago Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to this earth what was his activity Primarily, he was engaged in Sankirtan, the congregational chanting of the holy names of the Lord. For the common people, it was Sankirtan. For a few rare souls, intelligent beings, Lord Chaitanya discussed philosophy. We see how he met with Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, and describe to him the Atmarama Sloka and he described to him the teachings, he described to Prakashananda Saraswati the real meaning behind Vedanta. He described to Ramananda, for Ramananda Rai, Lord Chaitanya brought out the depth of Ramananda Rai's glory by his questioning. So Lord Chaitanya used different strategies, different techniques in order to reveal the nature of the Absolute Truth for all of us. We, we should have no doubt in the identity of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is revealed the more we follow the process given by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya describes the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He says, Vairagya Vidya Nija Bhakti Yoga Shikshartha Eka Purusha Purana Shri Krishna Chaitanya Shereradari Kripambudir Yastvam Praham Aham Prapaji that I bow down to that personality who is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is an ocean of mercy. He has appeared to give us knowledge of his devotional service, enriched with renunciation. So it's Vairagya Vidya Nija Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga based on detachment and knowledge. Through the practice of bhakti yoga, we have to automatically develop these two things. Detachment from all that is not in relation to Lord Krishna, a knowledge of the Lord and his different potencies. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu emphasized these things in his preaching, in his dealings, in his Sankirtan movement. It was not just sentimentally chanting the holy name, but there, were, there was also real understanding, real knowledge. We want to go deep into this message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and understand fully his teachings. He has given us the real message behind the scriptures. Before Sri Chaitanya Mahap Mahaprabhu appeared, there was some chanting of Hare Krishna, but it was only done by Brahmanas. It was only in temples. But it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who brought the holy name out, who gave it to everyone, who distributed it for one and all without discrimination. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission to give Krishna consciousness everywhere, all over the world, without discrimination. The, it is said, Sri Krishna brought with him a 
a storehouse of love of God, but the contents were kept sealed. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Panchatattva plundered that storehouse and distributed the contents everywhere without discrimination. They did not consider who was qualified and who was not. And the more they distributed, the more the supply increased hundreds and hundreds of times. So this is Krishna consciousness, distributing the message of Krishna, just as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us by his example. As Srila Prabhupada exemplified to us, Goravani Precharine, preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine. The Western world was fu full of impersonalism and voidism. Prabhupada saved it. Now, the Krishna Consciousness Movement has to continue Srila Prabhupada's mission and save the rest of the world from impersonalism and voidism. Particularly here in India, so much impersonalism and voidism. Only the Krishna Consciousness Movement can deliver them from that doom, from that hellish condition impersonalism and voidism, just types of different types of hell. But Krishna consciousness is giving life to every living entity, teaching them the real goal of life in the, cha in the form of the Sankirtan movement. So we all want to join in the Sankirtan, chanting and dancing, experiencing the holy name, the taste of the holy name. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us this, his nishta. He was very fixed in his chanting, in his mission, in his preaching. We have to follow the example of our acharyas, preaching and chanting ourselves and giving the holy name to others. This is our Krishna Consciousness mission. So every year we come here to Mayapur at the time of this Gorpurnima festival. We pray to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, please give us your blessings that we can try to do some tiny service on our part to distribute this Krishna Consciousness movement to more and more corners of the world because Lord Chaitanya desired the holy name would go to every town and village all over the world, not just only here in Bengal. Of course, it's very good that it's going in every town and village in Bengal, but we want to take it much, much further, everywhere, all over the planet. This is our duty. As devotees, Prabhupada always wanted to know, how many books have you distributed? How many devotees have you made? How many properties have you acquired? Then Prabhupada understood, we are working, how hard we are working for his pleasure. And Prabhupada's pleasure is Lord Chaitanya's pleasure. And Lord Chaitanya is none different from Lord Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. <laughs> any question? If there's any question, we have a microphone here. Okay, thank you. Srila Prabhupada ki, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki, Sri Gaur Purnima Mahotsava ki, Gaur Premanandi.